you know how to create the trajectory itself, find genes that are differentially expressed along the trajectory, subset the data, and plot as a function of pseudo time. We're going to be using Monocle 3 to build single cell trajectories and to do other typical pseudo time analyses. And we're going to be using it on this data set published in Cell in 2019, and it's a reprogramming data set. They have around 300,000 total cells, and they start with mouse embryonic fibroblasts, and they de-differentiate them into iPSCs and track some of these other fates along the way. And they do this over 18 total days, and they collect samples every day. So this is a really cool data set, but there are a lot of cells, so the actual processing time on my end might be a little long. In the data availability section, they had a link to the geo. So we're not going to get the raw data. We're just going to get this. Well, it says raw, but this is actually the counts tables or the output from the 10x pipeline. After untarring that download, we have a lot of files. So instead of doing this manually, we'll parse them out later when we open them up in R. So if you go over to the Monocle 3 website, it gives you a list of dependencies you need to install. You can just copy and paste that, and then you can install Monocle 3 itself. So sometimes installing a lot of R dependencies and large R packages, there's a lot of errors, and they're gonna be unique. Just scroll through the output and see what you're missing. In my case, I had to install several dependencies to get these dependencies to work, and then more dependencies, and then I was finally able to install Monocle 3. And if you don't already have Surat, you don't need to use Surat, but I'm going to be using it for this tutorial. And we're also going to need Surat wrappers. So anyway, once you have that all installed, we can go ahead and load in Monocle and Surat. And since I have like 800 different files, so there's not a super straightforward way in Monocle to load in H5 formats. So we're just going to do it in Surat and we're gonna do some of the pre-processing in Surat as well. But again, feel free to just do it all in Monocle. They made a nice, easy pre-processing, but Surat is very widely used and well-known. So I'm just gonna grab all the files from that directory data. So the study had the docs group in the beginning, and then they split it into two treatments, the 2i and serum. I'm just gonna take the 2i to reduce some of the number of cells. This is already gonna be a huge data set I'm working with. Only gonna take the files with H5, so if you look at that, we have 80 different files. So this is going to be a lot of cells. I like to make things difficult for myself. I could have just made a simple tutorial, but for some reason I wanted to do this. So we're just going to make a simple function to read in the files. And since these H5 files don't have any metadata, I'm just extracting the day information from them. This, of course, is going to be unique to your data. Or you might not even have to do that. So now I actually read in the H5 file from the data directory. I'm going to create a Surat object, filter out cells with fewer than 200 genes, and then I'm just going to do some very simple pre-processing. I'm going to filter out based on mitochondrial reads, and then filter out some of the outliers in the bottom two and top 97 percentile. Do the actual filtering. I'm going to return the day we extracted up here as a column in the metadata so we can assign day to each cell. And then finally, we're just going to return it. So we can use sapply to make a list of all those data objects using our input files function. So if you only had one file, of course you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't need to make it a function. You could just run it on one file and you wouldn't need to do this sapply or the merge function we're going to do next. But anyway, this is going to take a minute or two because we have 80 files. Once that's done, we're going to take this data list and convert it into just one Surat object. So we need to merge the first item in the list with everything else in that list. And then we can run this. All right, once that's done, if we look at it, we see we just have one Surat object with 169,000 cells. So we really have two options here. We could convert it to a Monocle CDS object now. But in my case, I'm going to pre-process it first in Surat. So I'm just going to do a very basic Surat pre-processing. 
You could do SC transform instead, which might actually be better, but I'm just going to keep it simple here. I'm just going to normalize the data, find variable features, scale, compute the PCAs, find the neighbors. We don't need a cluster. And then we're just going to compute the UMAP. If we don't do this, we're going to get errors later in some of the monocle functions. So just make sure to set the active assay to RNA. I wanted to make an important note. I didn't do integration here. I did try it. It collapsed the days where it shouldn't have because this data is over many days. It computed the actual biological difference based on days as batch effect. But let's say you had each of your samples is from the same system with the same cell types. Or if you expect there to be batch effect, you should do an integration. And instead of combining our data list with merge, this is a brief workflow where you'd select the integration features, scale, and run PCA on all the objects individually. Just run that function on them. Then we do find integration acres with RPCA, which is the more conservative Surat integration method. But even using RPCA on this data set, it collapsed the cells too much. And it also took a lot of memory. I wasn't able to process all the cells anyways. And then you would actually integrate the data into one data object. So now that that's done, let's just look at the UMAP and then group by day, which is that metadata column I added for each cell. So it's really what sample it is. And that's kind of hard to look at. So what I'm going to do is actually convert this to numeric. Uh, I'm calling it int here, but it's not actually an integer. So anyway, I'm just taking day, converting it to a number, and then turning IPSC into 20 or the last day. So if we look at this, we get a nice time progression starting down here at day zero where the cells are fibroblasts and then going all the way to when they're iPSCs. Anyway, now we can convert this Surat data into the monocle 3 CDS. And from the Surat wrappers function, we can do as cell data set and pass our Surat data. And if you had integrated data, this is what you would do as well with your integrated data. All right, so once we have it converted to a monocle 3 CDS, we need to run cluster cells, and we're just going to use default settings. And this is from the monocle package. Everything from now on is going to be using the monocle 3 package. We're now done with Surat. So after that's done, let's just peek at the clustering. That looks pretty good, just using default. And then importantly, we want to look at the partitions. So let's put color cells by partition here. So we have three different partitions, and this is important. We know that all of the cells belong to the same trajectory, but by default, what Monocle is going to do is separate these by partition. So it's going to draw one trajectory, it's going to draw another, and then another. So it's going to make a trajectory for each partition. Depending on your data set, you might want that. But we know all these cells here at a common starting point, and that even though from here to here, there appears to be a big transcriptional difference, at least enough to separate into different clusters and partitions, we want these to be connected. And in your data set, if you have multiple clusters, but you want them to be in the same trajectory, we'll need to change a default setting in just a second. So when we do the learn graph, we need to pass partition equals false. And then we'll run this. This is going to take several hours, probably, just because I have so many cells. You should see a progress bar, but I got rid of it. So once that's done, we can order the cells. I really like what they did here. So when you run this, it actually pops up this little window. And we can click choose and then actually highlight our day zero. Click choose again, and then you can just hit done. If you don't have a graphical interface, you can specify the nodes explicitly in the function itself, but the pop-up makes it so easy. So now we can actually plot the pseudo time. I'm just passing CDS and I'm coloring by pseudo time, which it's now calculated that we ordered the cells. I'm just going to get rid of some of these labels so it doesn't look too messy. And there we have it. We now have this pseudo time that looks 
very similar to our actual known time. So again, we started with fiber blasts and end with IPSCs, and we can track this trajectory all the way from the fiber blast to the IPSCs. So this data set's pretty interesting because you may not know, but when you dedifferentiate cells, only a small percentage of them actually make it back to IPSCs. So a researcher might be interested in seeing what happens along this path. For example, why did these cells follow this trajectory and probably reach a dead end? Likewise, for some of these other cells, these cells never made it to being IPSCs. So what's actually happening along this trajectory? We could, for example, look at some genes we know are important to IPSCs and to fibroblasts. So let's see how these change with the trajectory. You can see that SOX2 and NANOG increase a lot when they become very potent. Collagen seems to decrease a little bit, then increase again right before they turn into IPSCs, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, you could pick whatever genes you wanted here. One thing I forgot to mention here was that you may get an error that these genes don't exist in your data set, even though they really do. Um, it's just, they may fix this in the future, but it's just a problem with the conversion between the Surat and the CDS. So we just have to manually specify this gene name and gene name short column. So you'll have to run that maybe if you get an error here, or you could just automatically run this after you convert to the CDS. So Monocle has a bunch of different differential expression capabilities. One of them is this regression model where we could actually pass our known day value, or if you have a time value for your cells, we could actually pass that and find genes correlated with actual time. But I'm not gonna do that. I actually tried it and it crashed because it takes too much memory for my 200,000 cells. And it's not really the point of this anyway. This tutorial's to find pseudo time. But anyways, let's find genes that change with pseudo time. So we're gonna use this graph test and we're passing our CDS object. Make sure to pass principal graph and depending on how much memory and how many CPUs you have, you can increase the number of cores to make it faster. And since I have so many cells, this is gonna take several hours again. So I actually already ran this and saved it as an RDS. So I'm just gonna read it back in here. So the output is just a data frame, one row for every gene in your data set. And then we have some of these statistics. We have this Moran's test statistic, which is just spatial correlation. And then we also have the Q value or the corrected P value. So we're just gonna filter this down like you would with a typical differential expression data frame or what have you. So I'm just getting rid of columns with an A, keeping only the ones with the Q value of less than 0 0.05 and ones with okay. So we're still left with a lot of genes, 16,000, that are spatially correlated in this data set. This might be artificially high just because I have so many cells. So instead of looking at all the significant ones, let's just order them. So I'm going to order it by the Moran's test statistic. So we see the genes on top here. A couple of interesting ones like serpin one collagen, which is a typical fibroblast marker another collagen on the next page. But anyways, I don't have every gene memorized. But again, we could pick some of these genes and plot them like we did earlier. Let's just pick collagen and then the top three. And you see they are spatially correlated along these trajectories. This doesn't really show us important decision points or branches in the trajectory. So Monocle has this really nice feature where we can subset cells using this choose cell function. And again, this makes having a GUI and doing this very great because it's going to bring up another pop-up. And so we can do a lot of different subsets here. Let's see, we have this important branch here where these cells actually eventually become IPSCs and these cells reach these dead ends. So we could, for example, choose this section in here as our subset and just hit done. And if we look at this subset now, we only have 3,500 cells. So Monocle 3 actually has a good example for this too, but they have two very distinct cell types here with one clear branch. 
I might have so many cells and the nuances and branching where I select might not be as distinct as something like this, but nonetheless, let's try it. So we can do the exact same thing we did earlier with the overall data set with graph test, and we're just passing CDS subset this time. Everything else is the same, and then we're filtering the insignificant values. And this one's going to be much faster. It's only going to take like six minutes. So we can go ahead and plot those. In this case, it's probably not going to look that great because I just got this rectangular like subset here. Could make this better, select different subsets and etc. But I'm not going to get too complicated here for this simple tutorial. And let me show you another graphing function Monocle 3 has. In this case, we need to take a subset of our subset. And we're just going to keep the same cells, but subset by the genes. I'm going to use the four genes we picked up here. But if we subset that and then pass that subset into plot genes and pseudo time. And I'm also going to add a date and color. We don't need this. I'm just going to put it in there because we have it. And yeah, this looks messy. It doesn't look that great because I didn't really take the greatest subset. But it could look something like this. This is the example they gave based on that very distinct branch and the monocle 3 tutorial where it shows the gene expression as a function of pseudo time but anyways now you know some of the basic functions of monocle you know how to do the monocle clustering and partitioning you know how to create the trajectory itself find genes that are differentially expressed along the trajectory subset the data and plot as a function of pseudo time